Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be using an oldie but a goodie palette. I am playing with the Anastasia Beverly Hills Modern Renaissance palette. Uh, this was suggested by a viewer that I do like a throwback Thursday video where I use older palettes for looks. And I thought that was a great idea. Let's show some of these great palettes that don't get as much hype or attention on YouTube some love. Um, plus, I think that a lot of you probably have these palettes, and rather than promoting going out and getting the next best thing all the time, let's enjoy the things that we already have. So, I do plan on making this a series. I don't know that it'll be every single week, but uh, we will just kind of roll with it and see how it goes. So, this is the look that I created for today's video. I hope you guys enjoy this tutorial. If you are not following me on Instagram and Facebook, please check me out there. It's at Lisa J Makeup. Um, not only do I just promote my videos on those networks, but I also share more fashion related things and just kind of my personal life stuff. So I hope to connect with you there. Uh, let's go ahead and get started. So to prime the eyes, I'm using the new Revlon Colorstay Eyeshadow Primer. I used this in a tutorial last week, but I didn't check back in with you guys to let you know how it wore. So we're going to do that today squeezed out a tiny bit. It kind of reminds me of the Milani primer as far as like the color of it and the texture of it. It is a little lighter so it does brighten up the eyelid a tiny bit but it's still translucent. So I'm just going to use my finger and blend this all over my eyelid. All right so now that we have that on we're just going to go straight in with the palette. We are going to be using the Anastasia Beverly Hills Modern Renaissance palette. This is one of my favorite palettes. I really love this palette. And it's funny because when this launched, I don't even remember, I want to say last year, but it could have been two years ago. It's been a while. I didn't jump on the hype in the bandwagon. I didn't run out and purchase it right away. I probably waited like six or eight months to buy it. I thought it was really too warm for me. I didn't see myself using any of these like, you know, orange uh, fuchsia shades. Uh, and I don't use them too often, but the shades, the other shades that are in this palette totally make up for it. And I love this palette. I would say that this is one of my favorite palettes. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is uh, apply a kind of base color on my eyelid all over. I'm going to use this shade here, the lightest matte shade in the palette. Make sure you can see that. I'm going to use that. And I'm just going to dust this all over the eyelid from the lashes to the brow. This step isn't necessary, but I do notice when I do it, everything just looks a little more blended, a little softer. It just makes the eyeshadows blend together better. Next, I'm gonna go in with my transition shade and I am using this shade here, it's Warm Taupe. This is probably my, one of my favorite transition shades. I actually purchased this in a single uh, size from Anastasia Beverly Hills without realizing that I already had it in the palette. I love it so much. The name is Warm Taupe, so it's a good balance between cool and warm, I find. So if you're gonna do like really warm eyeshadows, this transition shade works really well. But also if you're gonna go more cool tone, it works really well too. I'm using the 221 brush by MAC. This is my favorite crease brush of all time. I just like the size of it. It's not too large, so you can control where the product goes, but it's soft enough and large enough to where it does do a good job of blending everything out. Next, I'm gonna take the shade Primavera. It's like a golden shimmery melon color and I'm going to pack that on uh, the center of my eyelid. Basically from the center of my eyelid to meet the outer corner. Next I'm going to take the shade right above it. It's called Vermeer and I'm going to pop that just in the inner corner of my eye. It's a beautiful bright champagne shimmery shade and I'm really just popping a little bit right in the center. Next, I'm going to go into the shade Bon Fresco. It's this really pretty matte purple shade here. And I'm going to use the same 221 brush. And I'm going to start in the outer corner and gently just kind of go in little bitty circles with my brush right in the outer corner and blend up. I'm not going to go all the way over like I did with Warm Taupe. I really want to concentrate this color more on just the outer corner. So that purple shade just added a little bit more depth. It also is going to kind of bring out the green in my eyes a little bit more since purple is a complementary color of green. I have a really great video that talks about color theory and understanding complementary colors for your eye color. I'll leave it linked down below. It's an older video of mine, but I still think that it has some really great information in it. So now I'm gonna go in and align my upper lash line and you guessed it, I'm using the Physicians Formula Lash Boosting Eyeliner in black. I still need to get another one of these. This one is past its date. 
I just really like this pen because it is easy for me to use. It's soft enough to where I can lay it on its side to get a consistent line and then I can use the tip of it to get that little outer wing and it bends nicely. It's not so stiff that I have any issues creating that baby wing. For my lower lash line, I'm going to go first in with a pencil and then I'm going to smudge it with an eyeshadow. I'm using the Pixi Endless Silky Eye Pencil and this is the shade uh, Bronze Beam. I really like these pencils a lot. They're very soft so you can work with them and blend them out quickly. But they do a good job of staying in place once they set. Okay, so I'm going to pop a little bit of color on the lower lash line just to kind of liven up this look a little bit. I'm going to use this shade Venetian Red. It's this really beautiful red fuchsia shade. And I'm using a 219 brush by MAC. And I'm just going to go directly on top of that eyeliner. Having that brown base is also going to kind of tone this color down. So you can see that it looks really bright and bold, but if you have a brown liner underneath it, it's just going to tone it down a little bit, which is really what I want. I want you to see that pop of color, but I don't want it to be so distracting that you see it um, a mile away. This color too is a great color for green eyes because it has so much red in it. I know I said purple is a complementary color to green eyes, but so is anything that has red. And if you think about it, purple is a mixture of blue and red, so that's why. So any variation, and basically any color that has red in it is going to complement green. So whether that's a real orangey red or a purpley red or... Understanding color theory can really help you take your eye make makeup to the next level. Um, you know, a lot of us wear neutral colors, but there is so much you can do with neutral colors. If you looked at a wall of neutral brown eyeshadows, you will see if you start to put your color theory lens on, you'll start to see shadows that are more, have more of a purple, taupey undertone or bronzy, warmer, rich red undertones. And so when you can kind of identify um, those tones that are within those neutral colors, you can pick the right neutral colors that are going to really complement your eyes the best. So next, I am going to line the inner rim of my eye with a brightening pencil. Ooh, that's a little bright and white, especially against that red. So let me see what I'm going to do to kind of tone that down. Let me go back over. It's a little brighter than I wanted it to be, but we're just going to roll with it. I, th I think once I put mascara on, it'll kind of balance it out a little bit. So I'm going to pop some mascara on my lower lash line. All right, so I got a little bit of mascara on the skin, but I'm just going to resist the urge to clean it right now. I'm going to let it dry. Mascara is really designed to adhere to hair, not to skin. So if you may have a mess up like that, just let it sit let it dry, and then you can easily just flake it off. If you try and go in there and clean it off when it's wet, then that's when you get a smudgy mess. So we're just going to let it sit, and I'm going to go and bronze and warm the skin up. I'm using the Butter Bronzer by Physicians Formula. This is a favorite of mine, clearly, who can tell? And I'm just going to load my brush up. these foundations are looking very similar. I'm going to keep wearing them throughout the day and check in for the other video that I'm filming to see how they stand up next to each other. But at first impression, they are both very, very similar. I'm having a hard time finding a lot of differences between the two. For blush, I'm using Warm Soul by MAC and I'm using the Real Techniques blush brush. Love this blush brush. It's Probably my favorite blush brush. Okay, I do think that blush went on a little bit more smoothly with the Maybelline than it did with the Revlon. I feel like it's kind of sticking a little bit, especially where I built it up, which you guys probably don't know what I'm talking about yet because that's filmed in a different video, but I added more foundation, Revlon foundation here to get a little bit more coverage and I can tell that the blush is not really blending out there. So now I'm going to go back at the eyes and I want to pull the crease color up a little bit higher. So I'm just taking the brush. I haven't added anything. What, what is on this brush is what we had started with, but I'm just going to kind of blend this a little bit higher just to lift my eye a little bit higher. And I am going to go and add a little bit of a brow highlight. I'm going to use that shade Tempero, which is what we used initially, but I want to add a little bit more now that we have the rest of the eyeshadow on just to pop that brow bone a little bit. Okay, now that that mascara has had time to dry, I'm just gonna grab a clean, stiff brush and smudge that away. And voila, we are done. 
I'm gonna line my lips with the Cryolon pencil. This is the 925 contour pencil. Cryolon is a brand that's really catered to professional makeup artists. Um, I think unless you live in like LA or maybe New York or a big market where there's a lot of professional makeup artists, you might just have to order this online. But these pencils are super affordable. I wanna say they're like $7 or something. And they're really long. I had a little bit of lip balm on, so it's going on really easily and smoothly. For lips, I'm using uh, this Estee Lauder lipstick in the shade Desirable. It's a really pretty pinky nude shade. Just like that, just a really soft nude baby pink. It has a good amount of pigment, it's very creamy. All right, you guys, and that sums up this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed this look. I like the way that this came out. This is really kind of a go-to look of mine, really. It's very wearable. It's great for day or night. It's glamorous, but it's not too much. It's kind of like my signature style. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Leave me all your questions and comments down below. Follow me on Instagram and Facebook if you don't already. It's at Lisa J Makeup. I only promote my videos on those channels, but I also post more fashion-related things and just kind of stuff that's going on in my life. So I hope I see you there. Thank you guys so much for watching. As always, I hope you guys have a fantastic day. Bye.